Hello, I'm David, the developer of Cornucopia. In this video, I'm going to show you tips and tricks to help people get started. A lot of people have been having problems uh, figuring out certain systems of the game. So this video is going to help you out. And I'm going to explain it from a developer standpoint so that it's really easy and you can have lots of fun playing. So let's click New Game. And then right here, here's where you insert your name of the player. So just click it and then you can either use your mouse to click or if you're on the controller you can use the d-pad to press the arrows and navigate from one to the other and then uh, we'll just finish it. I'll just say David. You can also use your keyboard and just type it in or like I said with your mouse and you can go back here or press escape to exit this and then just press enter when you're done. Next we're going to set our birthday season. So you can just click on each season. We have four seasons in the game. There's spring, summer, autumn or fall and winter. And your birthday is set automatically to the 19th. And the reason for that is because uh, all the NPCs in the game have random birthdays that set each new game and there are certain festivals that are on different dates and we didn't want to have an overlap where you could have the NPC and the player having overlapping birthdays so that was just our way of resolving that issue you can set your eye color here and right here we have a name that's automatically generated so we combined like two or three different things together to create a unique name. So whenever someone plays the game, it'll have a unique name here. But usually people want to set it custom. So let's click that and set it. And we'll just name it Blueberry Farm. And then press enter. Blueberry Farm is perfect. Down here, you can choose whether you want to see the intro cutscene and tutorial. Uh, definitely, if you're playing the game for the first time, you'll want to have this as the check mark. Next, we can select our gender, and there's a rooster for male, there's a chicken for female, and there's a duck for other, whatever, any other genders that you might identify as. We're going to do a male. And then we're going to click this tab up here to set our skin tone. So these are pre-selected uh, skin tones that you can choose from. Or you can go down to hue, saturation, and value and manipulate the sliders. You can see that it's not changing our skin tone over here because we actually need to turn the saturation up to see the effect. And then when we manipulate the hue, we'll see it. So you can actually marry uh, one of two different Kappas in the game. And it's kind of funny because some people make their character green and then they feel like it's more appropriate to marry and have babies with a Kappa. And in the game, you can actually have unique babies. So you'll have uh, hybrid Kappa babies. And we just had the artist uh, create babies that are unique, male and female, for each of these. For a magical baby, if you marry the wizard... Uh, for a ghost baby, for a character that I won't reveal. Uh, and also, there's another one, uh, the goddess. If you marry the goddess, uh, we have a cornucopia goddess. You can marry her, and you can have male and female goddess babies as well. So that'll be added to the game right away, actually. And if you're watching this video after I've made it, it's probably already added in an update, so... And you can change the value down here as well. Let's just do a normal skin tone here. Now on this next tab, we can set our hair. So this is probably my favorite hairstyle. It's like a mushroom cut. And it's one that I used to have when I was a little kid. It's kind of funny. And if you're a male, you can actually uh, click this little arrow here. And then you can choose more feminine hairstyles so whether you're a male or a female you can just click this arrow 
and you can have any sort of hairstyle you like. So we'll go with this one. We have pre preset ones here. And then you could also manipulate the hue, saturation, and value with these sliders as well. Next is the shirt. So we can change it around just how you like it. And then we have the pants or the dress. And on this tab, something that might not be immediately obvious, you can click the little arrow here. And then it's going to change to a dress or the overalls. So we have it set by default to always have the male and the female and the other gender wearing overalls. But if you like to wear a dress with no shirt, then just click the arrow there. There we go. And finally, we can set our shoes on this last tab. So I think that looks good. And everything's, we got our name, David, and we got the Blueberry Farm, and our birthday is set to spring. So I think that's good. So let's watch the intro cutscene. So you can see these little uh, text effects here. And later I'm going to show you how you can go into the settings and turn off these effects. So if this is not something you want, you can simply go into the settings and uncheck the box. And we thought it was important to add that feature. But a lot of people really love this sort of uh, text effect. So we have Andre here. He is the uh, doctor and he just moved into town and set up practice in his new building. And he has a uh, AI nurse, which you can marry. You can marry a uh, cyborg in the game as well. And she's very beautiful. He's frozen solid. Where did you find him? Deep in the mines. This is Winter. He's a very interesting character. And he was inspired by uh, a character from Azur Dreams that my sister and I played growing up. Uh, and the character's name was Gosh, and he, Gosh was very arrogant and like did funny things and like sort of self-defeated and uh, we were very inspired with Winter. Uh, some of these characters may have a bit of a redesign. Uh, our artist is working on a few of them to make them more attractive because we had some feedback that uh, not all the make main male characters that you can get married to are as attractive as the female ones. Although there are a lot of very attractive males in the game right now. So we're, we're gonna be working on that as well. Without totally changing who they are, of course. Deep in the mines, further than I ever thought anyone had ever adventured before. And in the game, there are 32 dateable and marriageable NPCs. And they all have their own unique personalities and like nine unique dialogue expressions for each one so there may be more people that you can get married and have children with in the game but that's what we have right now and there are male and female versions of each of the children and they have three stages of growth so there's the baby and then there's the toddler and then there's the child a lot of ropes pulleys and grit brought him up fighting past innumerable dangers how long do you think he was trapped in there and this is Ruffus, uh, the main farmer in the game. I've never seen him before. So you can see our character trapped in ice here. And we actually have different poses. So it's different each time you play. Like sometimes your character will have their pickaxe sticking out like they were just in the middle of mining something when they got frozen in ice. No one could survive this. I'm not sure there's anything we can do for him. This is beyond my skills at Dr. Ruffus. You're going to need to drive him to Avalanche Harbor Hospital. Andre, please tell my wife Rose I won't be returning home tonight. You must go now. Help me load this ice block into the back of my truck. It's surprisingly lighter than it looks. A 
Emerging from the grip of the profound freeze, we find ourselves revived in the hospital of a neighboring town. I turned off the music for this video just because I thought it would be easier to understand me. Doctor, it's not looking good. We must act and fast. Wait, do you hear that? A heartbeat, faint but unmistakable. Hang on, there's still hope. Can you hear us? Wake up. We need you to fight for us. Don't give up. We're not ready to lose you yet. So now we're driving back to the town of Cornucopia after being revived in a neighboring hospital in a different town. And we can see that there's a roadblock and it's actually the first tutorial in the game where you learn how to use your tools. Oh darn, it looks like a roadblock. Now that you're feeling better, I may as well give you these tools so you can clear this rubble. Oh yeah, and by the way, if you wanna skip the dialogue, you just have to click and it will like interrupt it and it'll jump to the end. You could also press space bar and it'll skip through it as well. In the settings menu, you can change the dialogue speed as well if you'd like it faster or slower, the printout. But you can always skip it. They're in the back of my truck. And here's all your starting tools, pickaxe, scythe, hoe, axe, wandering cannon, fishing rod. You're gonna have to do all the heavy labor. I'm not the spring chicken that I used to be. No need to worry, the doctor from Avalanche Harbor Hospital with their state-of-the-art facilities has declared you in prime health. No time to smell the roses, pick berries, or pick your nose. Let's get to work. And you can hear the train in the background. It's a steam train. So this tutorial is teaching you how to move things around your inventory. It's not, it's not a hold down and drag system, but it's a, a click and then it's picked up and then you click again to drop it. So click, move your mouse over and then drop it. And then you can press this little backpack icon here to open your backpack. And there are backpack upgrades that you can purchase at Harold's General Store in the future as well. If you wanna close these pop-up tutorials, just click the X right here or press escape on your keyboard. All right. Let's use W, A, S, and D to move around. And then we can use the space bar to jump. Now this tutorial is teaching us that we can click with our mouse to select a tool on the hotbar. And then if we walk up and actually click on one of these objects, we can interact with it. So with the pickaxe, we can break rock. So let's do that first. So we're going to select the pickaxe or the scythe or the hoe, the axe, the watering can, or the fishing rod. Or you can use the numbers on your keyboard. So one, two, three, four, five, six, etc. So I'm going to press one and then we're going to walk up using W, A, S, and D and then click on this rock here. If you want to pick up an item, you just click on it as well. Now, if we hover over the item, we can see what it is. And you can also see a little tool tip here that says it's refinable. So there are different things like you can tumble rocks or you can uh, refine things. And there are different fixtures for doing that. So it's just a useful little thing that you can see in the description of the item. Next, let's change to our scythe and we'll get rid of these uh, weeds here and you can see that we just got a little skill up and all our tools have skill ups as well as their different skills in the game as well like for bombs and for animals and stuff like that all right let's press four or just click here in order to equip our axe to break this little log and there's another thing that i would like to show you where there's a smart interaction hotkey on the keyboard and it's currently alt so if we select our hoe 
This is a mound of dirt here, and we need to use our hoe to interact with it. But instead of clicking, we could just press Alt, and we would automatically target the nearest smart object to interact with. But we still need to make sure that we have the right tool on our hotbar when we do this. So if we have the axe and we press Alt, it's not going to change to the hoe to do it. We have to have the hoe selected, and then we can press Alt, and we'll target it. Way to go. Jump back into the truck bed and let's hit the road. All right, so we're gonna walk up to our truck and if you wanna get in, just press the space bar and then make a jump. We wanted to make the game enjoyable for, the, for learning how to play and at the same time not too restricting. So this is kind of why we did these road roadblocks because it's still kind of fun, but you are learning. Another roadblock, and this one looks like it's gonna be a real toughie to get past. Oh no, we'll have to break out the big guns for this one. Time to bust out the explosives. Quick, grab the bombs from the back of my truck. It's time to make some fireworks. So we just got magnetic bombs. And whenever you get an item, you can see a little pop up here. So it says like how many you got and then the name of the item and a little icon. Bombs away. And you can see right here on uh, Ruffus's dialogue that there's a little heart at the bottom left of the screen. And this is your current heart level with that NPC. And there are about 10 different heart levels. And as you go, you can unlock unique recipes and go into the character's bedroom at a certain heart level and also at another heart level you can decorate their bedroom which I think is a really awesome feature that we added to the game. So all of the NPCs have bedrooms including the dog and you can decorate all of them when their heart level is high enough. So this tutorial is teaching us that we want to select the bomb on our hotbar and then drop it near whatever we want to explode. And it's always a good idea to run away after because you might take some damage. So let's walk over and then click it on the hotbar. And then we could either press Alt to do a smart interaction and just drop it near our feet. Or we could just click and then run away. This is a magnetic bomb. So not only does it explode, but it also suctions up all the items afterward so it's really cool great job you just blew all those rocks to smithereens our lovely town cornucopia is just down the road now if you waste all your bombs in this intro and you feel like you're stuck because you don't have any more bombs you don't need to talk to Ruffus or anything like that you just need to use your pickaxe and then break the remaining rocks and you'll be able to get past that way now hurry up and hop into the back of my truck bed so we can get moving again. So let's press the space bar and jump in. And you can see in the back of the truck that we have a little English bulldog here. And that's actually uh, my real dog. Uh, and in the back of the audio here, maybe you can hear it snoring because it's in the same room right now. In the game... Munger, the bulldog, is uh, a male dog, but in real life, Munger is about a 10-year-old female English bulldog. This farm was once the pride of some dear friends of mine. I've been stewarding it since they moved on. So there's a bit of a mystery about who the previous uh, owners of the land were. Feel free to make yourself at home here until you can get back on your feet. She's a fixer-upper for sure, but a little hard work never hurt anyone. This will keep you busy while you're waiting for your memory to return. So we lost our memory, so we don't remember anything from before we were frozen in ice in the mines for a long time. Clean up the garden of all the weeds, logs, and stones. It'll be ready to grow some delicious vegetables. So we use all the tools 
So now you know how to use the tools and then we can like totally clear out our yard and then we can start tilling the soil and planting vegetables. Just till the soil, sow the seeds, water, wait, and then harvest. Easy as pie. Speaking of pie, my wife Rose baked you a blueberry one as a welcome gift. Here you go. So we've got blueberry pie here. It's really good for when you first run out of energy in the game so you don't pass out. You can just eat that pie. Oh, and that shipping bin over there looks a little bit worn out. You'll need to fix it up before you can start selling produce. So the shipping bin is just to the right of your house and we need to fix it. Our mailman Stanley will stop by to pick up any outgoing deliveries every weekday at 6 p.m. sharp. So in the game, it's more realistic because Stanley doesn't come by to pick up your produce on the weekend. He takes a break. It's only on the weekdays. So if your shipment isn't being sold, just make sure it's not Saturday or Sunday at 6 p.m. It needs to be a weekday. And Stanley will actually walk into your farm and uh, show up and you could talk to him if you want at that time. Oh, would you look at the time? It's getting late. So this is your home. And we actually have uh, three tiers of homes right now. So you can uh, get the builder to upgrade your home two times. And the largest home is actually very large and the interior is also upgraded whenever you do that. The barn and the chicken coop can also be upgraded as well as the greenhouse can be repaired. One second. Forgot my soda in the fridge. Ah, that hit the spot. I've been using your home to store my soda since Rose doesn't approve of me drinking the stuff. I trust you'll keep that our little secret. From now on, this place is all yours. Just keep in mind, it never hurts to share a fizzy drink with an old man every now and then. So we just got a little bit of a hint that uh, Ruffus likes fizzy drinks. So if you ever get a soda, it's a good idea to give Ruffus uh, a drink to gift it to him. So there are certain items that are preferences for NPCs, like there's a boy named Finn and he really likes getting candy. But we created a really cool feature in the game where every single new game, each of the 50 plus NPCs all have two items that are randomly selected to be their favorite item in the game. And you have to discover what it is every single playthrough. And when you give that item, regardless of its original value, the NPC will love it more than anything. And it's one of the best ways to increase their affection the fastest. When you give a gift on someone's birthday, and you can discover their birthday when you increase their heart level uh, for the first time to the next level, uh, and then you give a gift, you'll get a multiplier for the gift so that it'll increase their heart level even, even more than usual. Here, take this to spruce up your home, a small housewarming gift from me to you. So we just got our first interior decoration for inside our home, which is a hanging barn pitcher. I'm completely spent. I should get some rest. And don't forget to look after Munger. You should head to bed soon. You have a big day ahead of you. Upon waking up, be sure to check and complete the quest on the right hand side of your screen to repair the shipping bin. So let's go into the settings and I'll just show you around here. So the first tab is for audio and you can completely mute the master settings by clicking this button here or you can drag the master volume all the way down or all the way to the top. It's the same for the other ones too. Right now I have the music turned off but we could turn it up and we would hear it. but I don't think I want it on during this just so that you can hear me give these tutorials better. Let's click on the graphics tab and you can change from window mode to full screen. 
We can change our shadow resolution, our water quality, our water reflection resolution. If you're on a laptop or you're experiencing any performance issues, I do recommend changing the water quality to low and dragging the resolution of the reflection all the way down to zero. But for most computers, you should be okay just on this default. For in-game, we can actually change the tilt. So if you don't like uh, this sort of uh, style like this, then you can change the tilt to something more like this. But usually somewhere in between is what people prefer. So if you're ever having trouble like trying to see what you're clicking on, then feel free to change your view. I'll make it somewhere in between. You can also zoom out or zoom really close in, depending on how much you want to see. And you can change the field of view as well. Here's the dialogue scrolling speed. So if you want to see the dialogue move faster as it's printed out, you can change it right here. And that's the V-Sync. So uh, to avoid screen tearing, you may need to uh, play around with this. We have an unstuck button. So if you ever get stuck in something you're not supposed to, like a 3D object, sometimes that happens in games like this. We just want to have a safety where you can click this and get unstuck easily. If you don't want to see any more of the pop-up tutorials, just turn this off right here and it'll stop showing them. You can change the bloom, which is kind of like a, a lighting effect. You can change the pitch black value. So if you don't like it getting really dark at night, then play around with this. Or if you'd prefer to get really dark, then you could also mess with it as well. So on the side, we have these little quests. So the first one is to place a furnace. And these are like uh, like main story quest cards and stuff. If you want to change the scale, just move the slider down so we can make it a lot smaller. This is one of the most obstructing UIs in the game. So I do recommend trying to figure out what you like best. I'll just keep it in the middle. These pop-ups are for notifications. I'll, I'll show you. Just on the left-hand side. You can see... Uh, we just picked up these seeds and it popped up right here. So if we change the pop-up notifications to be lower, we can see that it's a lot smaller. And some people prefer that kind of thing. So that's why we added it. The hovering UI scale is the scale for when you're hovering over an item. This little uh, informational window that pops up, you can make it uh, a lot smaller as well if you'd like. And this is where you change the text effects. So if you don't like the text that changes color or bounces around in different ways, just turn it off right here. The OG saving slash loading screens is we have vector artwork for the saving loading screens. We have all this beautiful artwork. And uh, if you want to see the original artwork, then turn this on. And if you want to see the vectorized version, then just leave it off. Anti-aliasing is a feature that sort of like rounds off the sort of jaggy pixels. Uh, interior, interior sparkles are something uh, quite interesting that I'll show. Uh, but first, if you want to change your uh, camera uh, without going into the settings menu, then you can do so. Uh, just hold down Alt on your keyboard and then use your middle mouse scroller in order to change the tilt. And if you want to change the zoom, then hold Shift and then use your middle mouse scroller. And I actually use this quite a bit. To enter a door, just click on it with your mouse. Whenever you enter a new area, uh, not every new area, but many of them, It'll get this little discovery, like you discovered your home, or you discovered Harold's General Store. Uh, and you get a free card pack, so it's good to explore around. So if you want to decorate your home, then you just click this little Furniture Edit button on the bottom right of your screen to turn it on or turn it off. And there's a little tutorial at the top left 
it says, press the right mouse click to pick up furniture. So if we hover over something, we can see that it's highlighted in yellow. So we could pick up this painting on the wall by right clicking with our mouse and then just find the perfect spot for it and then left click. So we'll place it right here. You could also open your backpack and find the hanging barn picture that Ruff has gifted to us. So I'm going to pick it up and then I'm going to close the backpack. Now with it picked up, I'm just going to left click anywhere. And now it's, it's selected here. And you can also see the tutorial here, left mouse click to place the furniture. So we can just click to place it. Middle mouse scroll to rotate. So that doesn't work for these paintings as they're automatically stuck to whatever makes the most sense. But if you're placing something like a bed or a lamp or something in your kitchen, then you could rotate it with the middle mouse scroller. If you want to turn it back into a blueprint so you can put it back in your inventory, then just press the right mouse click again. So let's just click and place that. Now we're going to right mouse click to pick it up and we can place it again. Right mouse click, we can right mouse click again and now we just turn it into a blueprint. So let's try moving something around here. Let's pick up this telephone. We'll use the middle mouse scroller to rotate it and then we'll find a new spot for it. How about right here? So easy enough. You can see these little sparkles here and that's what this toggle is. So if we want to turn those off in all the zones, uh, it does it that way. But I think it's better just to leave them on. Makes it very clear where you can enter and where you can exit areas. Let's click on the controls tab here in the settings menu. And you can see all of the controls for uh, your controller here. You can highlight and see uh, the different buttons and what they do. There's also descriptions right here. This is how you scroll down or you could use your middle mouse scroller. And right here, you can see the keyboard controls. So this explains everything. So you can read through in your own time. All right. So let's do a little bit more explaining of the basic GUI elements. So this is your backpack, as you know. And right here, we have different sorting options. So we can sort all the items in our backpack by type, which is like a category. So you can see these like sort of rocky type items all clumped together. If we had a bunch of seeds, then it would sort them all together and bombs would all be sorted together, uh, stuff like that. We have a sort by value. So now the most expensive items are going to be listed first and then the cheapest at the very end. So this is worth $400 and this is worth $2. We also have sort by A to Z. So we have blueberry pie, that's B, C for card pack, and at the very end we have T. So it goes alphabetical. So these are really handy things to use. And if you want to trash an item, just pick it up and then drop it on your trash can. And if you do trash something, you can't get it back, so you have to be careful. But certain items are key items or they're very important. Like if we picked up our pickaxe and we tried to trash it, the game simply wouldn't let us do it. So you don't need to worry. All the items that can be thrown out in the game, they can be obtained again in a different way if you can trash it. So don't worry about that. Right here is the calendar. So we can see that it's spring. In the game, we have four different seasons. So uh, each season has their own different festivals. You can see here's your birthday. So this is the spring planting festival that's coming up in five days. And it's a good opportunity to meet a bunch of different townsfolk. We have the Cherry Blossom Festival, and it's got a really awesome musical performance. Here's another one, the Cooking Festival, and it's a competition. So you need to compete and try and win the trophy and the Steam Achievement as well. And this one I'm really proud of because it's, it's really awesome. Right here, we can open the map. And you could also 
press M on your keyboard to open the map as well. So with the map, we can see that we have our player right here, which has your name. And this is our farm. So we have the greenhouse, we have the water well, chicken coop, barn, your home, the shipping bin, we have Munger's dog house, and this is your garden plot right here. And if you go to the right, you can see that this is the junction area, and there's a lot of different homes and shops in this area. Uh, we have the general store, we have the place where you can buy gardening, gardening stuff called Sprouts and Sprigs. Uh, we have the livestock auction house, and in the game, we have a very unique system for buying and selling chickens and cows and bulls and roosters and little baby versions of the animals as well. You have to bid on them. You can't just buy them from a, a store. You can, sell, you can sell your animals at auction, so it's really cool. Anyways, you can just hover over whatever and explore around. In the, in the game, there are currently three different additional homes that you can buy. The cheapest one is the Beach Villa, and it's for sale right now for $15,000. And I would say that it's quite a steal. And you can decorate the home inside once you own it. Uh, there's also a tree house that's for sale. And there's another home that's quite expensive called the Pine Hideaway. And it's got some of these homes have multiple rooms as well. Here's the peak, the Stargazer Summit. So if you want to get adventurous, go up here and explore around. But the old mines, which are very key in the game, are right here. So you just go through Junction, walk right through, and head to the old mines. Right here, it's Seedling Square, and it's the main town square in the game. And there are a lot of really important stores near it, including the game hall, which is the arcade, and there's a racetrack. And here's the uh, hotel and bar. So lots of really cool stuff. Let's uh, click on this first tab here and you can see the skills. Uh, so we have 10 different skills in the game right now. And you can see the reward for moving to the next level. Like you can unlock male and female scarecrow blueprints for uh, upgrading your sight skill right now to the next level. You can see the different characters. It's showing 49, but we do in fact have over 50 characters in the game. Uh, if you click on one of them, after you talk to them, it'll show, it will be the non-silhouette version. And uh, they have a heart level, they have their age, profession, their recipes that you can unlock as you go along, where they live, uh, your relationship status or their current relationship, because some of the characters are married already, their birthday, and their favorite items. So the male are on the left-hand side and the female are on the right-hand side. So we already met Ruffus, so we can see it here. Ruffus is married to Rose, so Ruffus is not a bachelor. You'll have to mod the game or something if you want to marry him, but he's, he's, he's not uh, someone you can marry right now. So this is a completionist tab, and the game has a ton of items. People have been giving feedback that it's a, almost an overwhelming amount of items, which I'm actually kind of proud of, so... I think it's pretty cool. So if you just hover over one, you can see what it is. And even if you haven't discovered it, you can still see what the name is. So it's kind of fun to see this. And for the fish, uh, it shows the like record stats of the biggest one that you've caught as well. Over here, we have the crafting. And as you level up your skill levels, you'll unlock new recipes to craft. So if you just click on one, you can see that they require items. And if you have the item in your backpack, then just click craft and it'll craft it for you. All right. Now, if we walk over here, you can see the mailbox. We're going to click on it with the left mouse button. And then we got a letter from our bulldog, which surprisingly is a talking bulldog. Hey there, friend. How about lending a hand with this bulldog's water bowl and chow tray? By the way, I've stashed some extra dog food in that slant roof shed over on the east side of the farm. Handy spot for keeping overflow items when you're packed to the rafters. If you win me over with delicious treats from Harold's store, I might even let you inside my doggy bedroom and do some redecorating. 
and don't think about ignoring me. You might discover the shipping bin area turned into my regal restroom. Trust me, you don't want to be receiving that kind of special delivery. So Munger is a bit of a sassy dog, but it has some really good wisdom for learning how to play the game as well when you talk to it. So if we walk over here, we can see that Munger has a water dish and a food dish. So if we click on our watering can, which is which starts fully filled with water, and then just click right here or press Alt for the smart interaction, we can fill it up. And it's good to do this every day, keep Munger happy. It increases its affection a little bit each time. And we receive some dog food. So let's open our backpack, click on the dog food, and then drop it in Munger's bowl. Awesome. You can see Munger's doghouse right here. And you can actually enter it when you increase the affection high enough. So right now it's locked to us. So we need to become better friends with Munger first. Over here, Actually, we have a cutscene here. Winter showed up. But I was going to say that this is our storage shed. I'm going to show it after this cutscene. Wow, you're back on your feet and full of energy. Don't forget, I was the one who saved you back there. Remember, small ships stick to shallow waters. Only the galleons dare to sail the open sea. But worry not in time, you'll become a formidable vessel. And please stay away from those treacherous mines. It's kind of reverse psychology. <laughs> Maybe you'd be better off tending to your crops and enjoying your peaceful homestead. I'm not really suited for these daring rescue missions. So Winter was the character that rescued you from being frozen in ice. Because he's an adventurer. Here, take this cooking pot. It should keep you busy and safe at home. So we got the cooking pot so we can cook. One of my servants damaged it. I don't need it anymore. Ah, yes. You're all set for this. Let the culinary journey begin. So we just got some cooking recipe scratch cards. Go ahead, take these. They might be a little worn, but they're still valuable. I'm sure you'll find them useful. Wait, you're not planning to go back in there, are you? He's talking about old mines. Keep in mind, those mines are no place for inexperienced adventurers. It's safer to stick to the comfort of your stove. Alright, so we're going to click on our storage shed to open it. And we have some starting objects in here. We got extra dog food. We got some pet treats, so we can gift this to our dog. It's really gonna like this. We got some quest card packs. We got some quality vermi compost. And we got some cool bombs to try out. I think it'd be fun to try out these bombs, so let's just add them to our inventory. If you wanna pass something in your backpack, you can pick it up and drop it on this little backpack icon. We also have the sorting functions as well right here and the trash can. Um, there's also hotkeys here. So if you want to move everything out of the storage bin, then press Q and it'll move one at a time. Or you can press Z to move the entire stack at once. And if you open your backpack, you can do the same thing to move it to the storage bin because we're in range of the storage bin. So we'll press Q and we can just send a bunch of stuff. There we go. Now let's close it. And let's click on this bomb and just show it off for fun. And one of my favorites is this spooky bomb here. So let's drop that. I love that one. You can see these little tutorials on the right hand side of your screen. So that's what we want to focus on in order to fix our shipping bin. And it's pretty much the main thing that you should do at the start of the game. If you want to collapse this, then you can click the little icon and you can make it smaller or larger so you can show the text. These little buttons here, uh, you can click and this is showing the different story quest cards. There's also active cards. You can have different cards for different boosts and card quests and stuff like that. And that'll show them here, but we don't have any active right now. Or you can just turn it all off so you don't see anything here. I'm going to leave it on the story quest because it's so important and make sure that this is expanded out. Right here, we can see our energy. So if you just hover over it, we can see that it's 90 out of 100 and our health is 91 out of 100. 
you can actually get items that will increase the max amount. And there's no limit on this because some of the items you can just keep uh, earning indefinitely. So you can get really powerful. Uh, this is our uh, money right here. So it just is added and we can see how much we have. This is the season. So right now it's spring. If you hover over this, you can see the weather. And this is our little uh, thing for seeing the day and night cycle. The current time, it's 2.30 a.m. And it's Tuesday the 2nd. So you might be thinking, oh my God, are we going to pass out right now? Actually, we made the design decision to not have the player pass out. So you'll see that at 3 a.m., it's actually going to fade the screen to black. And then everything in the world is going to grow. But you won't be penalized. So if you want to go explore the mines, just stay up all night and have all the fun you want. But if you want to recover your energy and your health, it is a good idea to sleep in your bed. So let's enter here and we'll click on our bed and then we can either sleep, which is sleeping without saving, or we can click sleep save and it'll save the game. So let's click that. And that's a stork delivering a baby for the player for after you get married. All right, so right here you can see that you have a fireplace, so we could actually like add some logs to it just by having it on a hot bar and clicking. And then that, that kind of is like a fun little thing you can do. If you want to talk to your dog, then uh, just click with your mouse. Just right click. And now some of these controls may change over time. Uh, but we always have clear indications with the cursor what you need to do. So maybe it won't be right click to talk in the future. Maybe it'll be left click. I'm not sure what we have planned, but we want to make it as intuitive as possible. So just sort of look at what it, what it shows. This patch of land has been my humble den for a while now, always full of surprises and humble pleasures. A slice of heaven for those who find joy in the simple things. So we just talk to our dog one time. Now each NPC, you can talk to them two times a day for and have unique dialogue. After that, they're gonna give you sort of a busy response that's randomized. So we can talk to it again for some more unique dialogue. Don't bother telling anyone I can talk. You'll end up locked in a padded room and I won't get any dinner. So if we wanna give our dog a gift, so for example, let's go into our storage shed and get some of those dog treats these pet treats right here we're just gonna give it as a gift and it happens to be munger's birthday today so we got a bonus and that's all randomized when their birthday is we didn't discover their birthday, but when we do in fact discover it, like, because if we just got really lucky, it'll actually show a little birthday icon on the calendar for the NPC. Thanks, I'm not sure what to do with this. What? It's a pet treat. Come on, Munger. I guess I need to improve some of these gift being received dialogues sometimes, but it's hard to make it really robust dialogue at certain times. So right now we have our hoe equipped and I'm just tilling the soil, but I know it's really tempting to just go and do whatever you want. And if you want to, you can, but the main thing we should focus on is repairing the shipping bin and we need to do these quests in order to do that. So let's open our backpack and we'll find our furnace blueprint. So let's pick it up and then we're just going to move our cursor around you can see there's little red squares but we can't place on the red squares, so we need to find an open spot so let's just click right here and then place it and then we have a little tutorial that's showing us we need to drop stones into the furnace four of them in order to process it to get our blocks so let's find some stones we have some four stones right here and we're just gonna click on the furnace four times or you can hold down and now it's processing and you can see at the bottom left of the screen, you can see how many minutes are left in processing. So let's go find something to do in the meantime. We'll just clean up our yard a little bit here. 
pelts done. And you can see on the right hand side of the screen our produce tutorial updated. So it says process four stones in the furnace. And we're getting skill ups as we go. So we can open our thing here to see the skill levels. And we almost have this reward. So let's keep going. There we go. Our scythe skill went to level one and we unlocked a compost bin blueprint. So if we go to crafting, you can see that now you can make the compost bin. So we just need 25 plant fiber and then we just click craft and it'll work. There's a little uh, funny design here where uh, whenever you're mining something, there are hidden items. So maybe we can find one. If we just click around, sometimes you can discover a hidden item. There we go. You see this little iron ore here? It's becoming uh, non-transparent. So we just click on it, then we can extract it. And when designing the game, I wanted that to be like a really important feature, but it seems like most people don't notice it, but I just wanted to point it out. All right, now we got our blocks made and we need to gather some logs. But before that, let's check out our chicken coop because I have a feeling there's something important in there. This is our barn and this is the chicken coop. So let's click on it. So we discovered our chicken coop and we got a card pack. So let's walk in. Oh, and there's Ruffus and Rose. Oh my stars, this place is simply brimming with potential. Absolutely delightful. A woman's touch can truly work wonders. We were eagerly hoping to find you here. Ready for our grand surprise? Prepare to be amazed because we have a big surprise for you. One of our chickens recently hatched a chick and we immediately thought of you. So we just got some items. These are good items to feed your chicken. You got like fishing bait style items and different herbs. They tend to be the favorite of the chickens. Remember to feed the little one daily. Chickens are remarkable creatures. They'll follow you wherever you go. Plus they make fantastic little assistants. They're capable of breaking rocks, felling trees, and even lending a hand in battle. Sounds unbelievable, right? You're going to have a great time together. I'm sure you'll come up with a fitting name for the chick. Ah, and one more thing I almost forgot. Animals thoroughly enjoy a good brush down each day. I must go check on the oven, so we'll catch up with you later, darling. So this tutorial is just teaching you if we click on the... Uh, top left to set our pet's name. So someone's naming their cow flower. And you can command it to go interact with things and go gather resources for you. They can help you in combat. And it's one of the key mechanics of the game are the animals. And there's a lot to it. And I'll, I'll do my best to explain the systems. So let's walk up to our little chick here. And the color is randomized, the first chick you get in the game, so it's different every playthrough. We'll click on it, and now you can see that it's following us. So whenever we walk around, it's going to follow us. So it's always good to have a, one pet following you around at all times in the game. If we go up to the top left here, you can see that we can click on the chick's name, and then we can set it. So let's set it, its name to like something like orange and then press enter. There we go. Now we can make it so that chick will automatically assist us and I would always leave this on. I would always leave it green but some people might want to turn it off. Uh, and we have the chick stats right here so we click on that and we can see all these unique details like is it a male or a female like a chicken or a rooster when it grows up. It's hunger level, it's happiness, uh, how many days old it is and these are different skills that you can level up. So like it's racing rank because they can race its power level and this affects like its damage and like gathering resources, its speed, its skill, and its bond. Right here you can see they each have randomly generated favorite foods 
and disliked foods that you have to discover and it's unique for every single animal. For chickens, they tend to have these as worms or as uh, like beetles or like different herbs like uh, dandelion, stuff like that. So let's uh, exit the chicken coop here. Now, if you leave your chicken coop overnight, then you won't have to feed it. But if, if, if you have it following you all around and you sleep in your house, then it is a good idea to always feed it so that it stays happy. Let's take our brush and we'll just drop it on the hot bar slot here and select it. And then if we just hover over our little chick here and then click, we can make it extra happy. And you can do this once a day, but sometimes it's fun just to do it extra. <laughs> it's cute. All right. So now that we have our little chick helping us out here, let's uh, chop down some trees to get these logs, get this fish, uh, this uh, shipping bin fixed. So if you right click, you can actually command your pet to go interact with the thing. So now it's going to go chopping down this tree for us. Let's help it out. Very nice. Now, because we have this little toggle here set to green for assisting the player, if we click on something, our chick is automatically going to start helping us out. And you can see that our chick is getting little skill ups too. So its skill is increasing, its bonds increasing, and the different stats. You can see that we just have our axe special ability is ready. So under these different tools, we have this little charge meter, and this is for a special ability. So right now it's yellow and it's full, and we can press the control key in order to use it. So if you hover over an object and then you press control, we can use this special. So let's do it on this tree. Just press control, and then it uses the special and it's very powerful. You can also use this special in combat as well. And it works for our watering can, it works for our pickaxe. So we could do the pickaxe, for example, too. Boom. We could do it for the scythe. Clear a lot of stuff at once. There we go. We could also do it for tilling the ground. Awesome. All right, now we have to place the saw. So let's go into our backpack, find the saw right there. And then we could do it from our hotbar even, so let's do that. Click on it from your hotbar, then let's find a place to place it. Click right here. There we go, perfect. Now, if we wanted to pick up a saw or a furnace or another uh, processing item like that, just have a tool equipped and then right click on it and it'll break it. And then you can replace it, just, just right click. Easy as that. And if you stuck a, a few items in there and you want to get the items out, then just right click and you'll be able to fully recover all the items every single time. So don't worry about it. Awesome. All right, now we need to process some logs in the saw. So let's find some logs here and we'll drop them in the saw. Now that that's processing, let's just clean up our yard a little bit more. So you can see that our energy is really low. We got zero out of 100 energy. If we don't want to pass out, but by the way, there is an achievement for passing out. So maybe you want to do it one time. We just go into our backpack and let's find something to eat. Right here, we have some lemongrass and there are hotkeys here. So if we press the Q key, we could eat it. Or if we press the Z key, we could feed it to our pet. When you have your backpack open, the game is effectively paused. So if you're ever in a combat situation or a boss battle and you're feeling a little bit too overwhelmed, just open your backpack 
and you don't have to worry about time passing or being hit by any enemies. So we can eat during the pause state and it there's no penalty for it. So let's just press Q to eat. There we go, awesome. And let's also press Z to feed to our pet and we restored some energy for them too. Nice. Opening the settings menu also pauses the game even though you can sometimes hear things as well, but it is paused. So that is how you pause the game. If you want to go and uh, go to the washroom or something like that. Or your boss comes in the room. We just reached mining level two. That's awesome. So we have more crafting recipes. Now this is showing us how to repair the shipping bin. So now that we processed and got our lumber and our blocks, we just have to drop them onto that little sign in order to repair it. So let's go collect our lumber here. And we'll go into our backpack. We'll pick up the lumber and then we'll just drop it on there. And the blocks, we could even do it from the hotbar. So just select it and then click. Very nice. Now we can sell stuff in our shipping bin. So just right click to open the shipping bin or if you have an item that you want to sell, just click on it and then you can just add it. If you want to add items uh, really quickly, then use Q and Z. Q will send an individual item to your shipping bin and Z will send the whole stack. So I'm just going to hold Z and then just wave over these items and sell a bunch of them. Awesome. Now, when we right click to open it, we can see the amount that this is gonna sell for at 6 p.m. on a weekday. And if you sleep through that time, it'll actually still sell it and you'll see the pop-up for how much it's sold for when you wake up. Now we're gonna use the compost bin because we're gonna get ready to farm. So click on the compost bin blueprint and we'll place it on the ground. And we're going to make some compost in order to enrich our soil. Because when the soil is better quality, uh, then you can grow larger vegetables. So I think I sold all of our plant material. So let's go gather some more. We'll use our scythe. And remember, you can press the Alt button to use the smart interaction. And if you're uh, doing something, uh, like say you're citing something, but you're like, you know, I want my pet to do something else at the same time, then just right, right click on it to command your pet. And you could be citing or doing combat, or you'd get your pet to do combat while you're breaking rocks. So it's like multitasking. So you can say, oh, okay, keep breaking that rock. Or maybe you're just a really lazy farmer and you just want your pet to do all the work. Then just command them around by right clicking on objects and then just walk over and collect it after. Let's take this plant fiber and we'll add it to our compost bin. And the real munger in real life is actually trying to get outside to go to the washroom so it's making <laughs> whining noises. So my girlfriend is gonna go let it out it's a bit noisy, but let's talk. Let's talk to the in-game monger. So in-game monger is a bit aloof right now. It doesn't. It doesn't want to tell me anything new. We have twenty-six minutes left on our compost bin, as we can see at the bottom left of the screen. Now we're going to uh, learn a bit about farming here. So 
he's just tilling the soil here. So let's pick up this compost and we'll get our hoe and just click on the soil to till it. Now that we tilled the soil, we can take our compost and then we can drop it on the soil in order to enrich the fertilizer level. So let's grab our compost, green compost, we'll put it on the hot bar. And then when you select it, just click on the soil you want and then we'll enrich it. Wonderful. Now this tutorial is showing us how to plant seeds. So you just take the seeds on the hot bar and then just click on them and then water them using the watering can. And you can fill up the watering can using this watering well over there. It's all pretty intuitive. And your plants are ready to be harvested when there's little sparkles at the base of them. So don't do it prematurely. And we can see Stanley is coming to pick up the shipment at 6 p.m. on weekdays. Awesome. And the game is a little bit dark right now, so let's sleep in our bed. All right, we'll head outside. Now we have new mail and uh, different people in town introduce themselves and give us some free stuff. So are you two having a grand time together? That's what I love to hear. Just remember, your little chick pal will accompany you on any adventure. And our feathery friends are always eager to lend a helping wing. Animals just love routines. They feel happiest and eat better when they know they have a cozy shelter to roost in every night. Oh, and don't miss out on the fun of feeding and brushing your little fluffy partner. And he gave us some mealworms to feed. By the way, have you stumbled upon our lively auction house yet? It's an exciting place for exchanging all sorts of animals. A real bazaar. You should definitely join the fun. So let's make sure that we brush our chick. Make it really happy. And we'll feed it some of these mealworms too. Awesome. And we just got a letter from Camellia. Hello new farmer, we'd love it if you'd stop by our little gardening shop soon. My daughter and I can get you started in the fine art of vegetable cultivation. And by the way, Camellia is the mother of Penelope. And uh, they're actually both marriage candidates. You can marry Penelope or her mother, uh, Camellia. So we allow a lot of unique marriages in the game. Just till, sow, water, and harvest. Easy as one, two, three. I hope this helps get you started. So, we're going to plant our seeds in the soil, but first I'm going to till a little bit more. Alright, so let's take our wild root seeds, put them on the hot bar here, and then select it, and then just click where we want to sow the seeds. You can see at the side here that there's little pop-ups like optimal fertilizer level. Now, if you just want to get started uh, and not worry about the complexities of the advanced compost system, then just don't worry about it. You can plant any seeds in any quality of soil. It doesn't matter. You're always going to get vegetables. So don't worry about these seeds requirements. They say they recommend soil conditions of... Uh, being loamy and uh, nitrogen, potassium, and phosphorus being one. But you don't have to worry about it because you can always get a small vegetable. But if you want to try your hand at getting larger vegetables, which I recommend for players who have a bit more experience, then pay attention to this little pop-up right here. So we're hovering over a specific soil tile and we can see the soil nutrient contents. And when it says fertilizer conditions are met, that means that the seed requirements for nitrogen, potassium, and phosphorus are ideal. You can see on the seed packet here that it recommends uh, nitrogen 1, potassium 1, and phosphorus 1. And if we hover over on the soil, we can see that the nitrogen on the soil is 3, 
the potassium is five, and the phosphorus is two. So it totally meets the conditions, and we're guaranteed to get a regular sized vegetable and not a small one. So let's click and place the seed in the soil there. And we can see that it was optimal fertilizer conditions. There's another thing that you should pay attention to if you want to grow larger vegetables, and that's the type of soil texture that it recommends. So these wild root seeds, you can see in pink, it says it prefers loamy soil. There are different types of soil textures. There's sandy soil, there's silty soil, there's clay soil, and there's loamy soil. Sand, clay, and loam are the extremes on the different soil texture spectrum. And in the middle, you have loamy soil. So if soil is in the middle of sand, clay, and silt, it becomes more loamy. Think of it like a diagram with like three different points, and then in the middle, you have loam. So if we just hover here, we can see, oh, this is poor, pure clay. This is silt, sand, loam. This is silt, sand, loam again. This is pure clay. And that's why there's different colors on some of these soils. So let's uh, till more of the ground here, and maybe we'll discover some more colors. It looks like our soil is very uh, clay rich. I'm not sure if that's like a, a bug or not with the game right now, but it is in fact showing the different textures, but maybe they're not visually updating. So if we hover over with our seed pack, we can we can definitely see the soil texture. So right now we have uh, silt sand loam. So this has loam in the name. So because our seeds are loamy, that will actually give us the benefit of the loam because it is in the name. So if we can find one that's loam where the NPK, nitrogen, potassium, and phosphorus levels are met, then we have a really good chance of getting a large vegetable. So this looks like a good one, so let's plant there. Now we can use our watering can and we can just click and it'll water the seeds. And if you sleep in bed at night, then they're gonna uh, grow up by the next day. Or if you stay overnight at 3 a.m., they'll age up and the plants will grow. In the mail, we actually got a free sprinkler, but because our inventory was full, it was actually sent automatically to our storage shed. And this is a kind of a unique thing about the game because if you fill up your inventory when you're on an adventure in one of the areas, because there's five different bosses, there's a bunch of procedural areas, then you don't have to worry about like losing the items or having to go back and get them because everything is going to automatically be sent to your storage shed. So right here we can see that we have a sprinkler that we got in the mail from Sprouts and Sprigs Gardening Shop from Camellia. So let's go and take that and we'll just place it near the seeds so that we don't have to water as much. And that'll help us out a little bit. So if we sleep in our bed, we can see that our seeds have grown. All right, let's brush our chick. And we just got to skill up. So if we go here, we can see that our animal husbandry skill just got ticked up there. And let's feed it a mealworm. And let's go back outside. Now today you can see that it's raining. So all of these uh, tilled spots are automatically watered. So you don't have to water today. You can focus on doing other things that are fun. <laughs> 